and welcome to the Mailbox Rose Gallery. My name's Sean. And my name's Birch. And you will never guess where we are this episode, listeners. We have been on our travels, as you may remember. We uh, went on holiday to Transylvania. We got dropped off on a Greek island and making our way back home, we've gone a little bit further along the Mediterranean and we're in Rome. Just like those picture postcards that you get from your gran when she goes on her holes. Yeah, um, we're not on our holidays, unfortunately, though. We are, we're having to work to pay for our fare back to the UK. Yeah, I'm, I'm not doing quite so much sightseeing and holiday making as I would like to be doing. Unfortunately, we're sort of stuck in a gelato kiosk at the moment. We are. We are, we are working in a gelato kiosk, but we are sat looking out on a beautiful Roman piazza stationed outside the da vinci museum here in rome um so you know there are worse places to be working i guess but i mean the the, the customers here the, the, these these italians i mean they've got no no sense of humor at all amongst any of them why what have you what have you been doing to them you, you, you try to just crack a few jokes you know and like none of them none of them bite like whenever they come up to order like an ice cream i'll usually go gelato like, if you want i mean you, you'd be rubbing them up the wrong way, calling it ice cream. Well, I mean, that's the thing. Firstly, they're like uh, uno gelato or whatever it is they fucking say. <laughs> and then I'll, I'll say, uno gelato, you mean one ice cream, mate? What do you want? we got choc ice, we got um, Mr. Whippy, we got uh, 99 with a flake. <laughs> and they, they, they just put their back up and then they're really annoyed when I, all of a sudden I just go, just one cornetto. <laughs> they, they're just like... <laughs> They storm off with their families, you know, don't pay us, don't take the uh, the ice cream, or gelato, I'm sorry if that's what it's called. I mean, what, what, what's the difference between a gelato and an ice cream? Well, Birch, I mean... And don't I say actually three paid... pounds. <laughs> well, Birch, I mean, I actually paid attention during our gelato orientation fortnight, and uh, I can tell you there is a difference, actually. Gelato, they're less fattening, and uh, they're richer in flavour and texture. Nah, give, give, give me a choc ice any day of the week, mate, or a Vionetta. Um, what, a whole Vionetta? To yourself? Yeah. On a stick? <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah, that's right. I usually I usually go into the garden, get, get like a branch from one of the trees, like, <laughs> s- snap it off, get the Vionetta out, pierce it with the stick, and, you know, just, just have a, a lovely, lovely time. It really does sound lovely. Um, I mean, I can tell that your travels have not changed you most people say travel broadens the mind um you're very much stuck in your ways uh, british and proud of it i guess yeah yeah if there's one thing i've learned on my travels it's that the rest of the world is absolutely insane <laughs> well um i don't know what to say i mean t- w- hopefully we can win you around to some other cultures yeah uh we are as i mentioned stationed outside of the da vinci museum here in rome and uh, i th- I don't know about you, but I've been feeling quite inspired by the uh, the man, Leonardo, in terms of how we can improve our lives here working at this kiosk. Yeah, I mean, obviously we can't afford to uh, to go inside, but from uh, from what I've gathered from tourists leaving the building and what they've had to say, he sounds like a pretty interesting chap. Yeah, and had you heard of him before we were stationed here? Um, I'll be honest, when I heard that there was a Leonardo da Vinci Museum, I got very, very excited because I thought it was uh, for one of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Oh, okay. I thought you were going to say you thought it was Leonardo DiCaprio. You were going to see, like, the door that he was floating on and the spinning top from Inception. No. No, you thought it was the turtle. Yeah, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yeah, that's that's yeah. what I was hoping for. I, I, I thought it was odd, like, a whole museum. Like, it's not even dedicated to all four of them. You know, there were four Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Sean. Oh, were there? Yeah. Yeah, to, yeah Raphael, Leonardo... Michelangelo and Donatello, of course. Um, of course. And yeah, I thought it's odd and just having a, a museum just for one, and then it turns out it's this guy who dicked about with paint. See, I find that very strange because The Da Vinci Code is your favourite film. Oh, that's about him, is it? Yeah, yeah, you know, the Tom Hanks one. Yeah, where he has the hairpiece, yeah. Oh, right. Huh. Yeah, I suppose that sort of makes sense now, Da Vinci, Da Vinci. It, it's the same Da Vinci look. All the pieces, all the puzzle pieces fit. Oh, just like in the classic Dan Brown book. Oh my god. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, one day maybe you'll read that book. One day, yeah. It's on my shelf, gathering dust. Yeah, it's on a lot of people's shelves, gathering dust.
like you say, Da Vinci was many things. I feel like we're going to focus on him as an inventor today, though, because uh, we can try and improve our lives with, with a bit of inventiveness, and uh, we're not interested in, in Renaissance art or any of that shite. So, no. we, But we like inventions, though, don't we? Really? Gadgets and things like that. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I, I love a good gadget or an invention. So, should we discuss some of his inventions, or, or did you want to tell us a little bit about the man first? I suppose we can, yeah. So, he was born... On the 15th of April, 1452, his name was Leonardo di Ser Piero da Vinci, and he was born in the town of Vinci, which is sort of a, a, a town in the hills of uh, Tuscan. Um, there's not actually not a lot of information about his, uh, his childhood and his early life, just that he showed a, a real flair for art and for someone who is so uh, well regarded as a kind of a, a thinker uh, and a polymath, he, he had like pretty basic education, which which just goes to show school is useless. Well, yeah, I mean, me and you know that, don't we, from experience? We certainly oh, never got any use out of it. Absolutely. And Leonardo da Vinci is just uh, he just goes to show that uh, you know, with with a bit of uh, know how and some talent. You can you can achieve many things. You can have a, a museum made of you, for one thing. Yeah, yeah. Well, maybe one day we'll have museums f- for us. You know, it's it's a tragedy that there hasn't been one made already. Well, yeah. I mean, I don't think we're quite there yet in terms of achievements up there with with Da Vinci, but uh, maybe our maybe our time here in Rome will change that. Oh, actually, no. Come to think of it, did I did I tell you um, my my mum has uh, made that museum about us? Uh, no, you didn't. I'm very interested though. Oh, well, I mean, like, you, you know how big a fan she is of, of the podcast. And yeah, what can I say? She's made like a, a museum in honour of us and, and the podcast. You know, it's um, she rents out the local town hall every Sunday and puts up a little stall, a little listening booth for the uh, for the podcast. Our baby pictures and stuff like that. I don't even know how she got hold of my baby pictures. Um, yours, I can imagine she could source quite easily. But mine, it's very strange. And... Uh, what I'm interested to know what sort of artifacts she keeps in there. Maybe like um like a chunk of ice from when we uh, defawed the frozen Walt Disney. Yeah, yeah, she's got uh, she's got a chunk of that ice on ice, so it won't melt. Yeah, does she has she got anything like a tuft of Bigfoot's hair? Yeah, that's right. That's exactly what I was going to say next. Funnily enough, yeah, yeah a tuft of Bigfoot's hair. She hasn't got that dinghy that we rode around the Pacific Ocean. Uh, with does she you know when we were trying to find Amelia Earhart she has that as well yeah she has all sorts and uh, she also has more personal items like a pint bag of uh, our blood a, a pint of our blood a pint of each of our blood or, or or one pint one pint like of our blood mixed together like half a pint of mine half a pint of yours mixed together that's right yeah half a pint of mine and half a pint of yours mix mixed together because i mean the, the well, podcast is both of us so it's it's a it's a podcast blend of, of our blood uh, that's very very sweet to hear I, i'm a little bit concerned as to where she got that much of my blood uh, and your blood to be honest as well although again yours would be more readily sourced than mine considering uh i don't actually know the woman well I uh, willingly gave my blood, and uh, I also willingly gave your blood as well. It is years ago, um, when when the podcast first started. In fact, every every night I I would um, bloodlet you, basically with a little jar underneath, and just like take take some of your blood as, as you slept. Oh, okay, yeah. Well, as long as it wasn't too much, I mean, I'm still standing. Right. Well, it's very uh, it's very considerate of you, actually. Um, I suppose you knew that we were destined for greatness. Yeah, that's right. And I was also uh, sort of into the idea of cloning something with both of our blood. Thought it might be quite fun. S- something, not someone. Something. <laughs> well, with I, both I, our blood. Like God forbid, if something should happen to us, you know, and uh, to to carry on the podcast, we could have this uh, this duo blooded clone you know, carrying on for us. Right, okay. So, oh, God. Okay, we're going down a bit of a rabbit hole here, but so what I'm picturing is it's it's one person, it looks kind of like me, but kind of like you, sort of like if you put our pictures into one of those websites and it kind of merges them, hmm. um, but it's just talking to itself because it's still only going to have one brain, right, and one vocal 
you know, one voice box. It's just going to sound like one person talking to itself. I'm going to be completely honest, Sean. I am not a man of science. So I'm not sure how this would go exactly. The way I pictured it is that it, this thing would have two mouths with our voices. But right. I guess now that you mention that, it probably probably wouldn't. It probably wouldn't work at all. You know, I, it, was just a, it was just an idea. It was just an idea. Just an idea, yeah. yeah. Well, you got the blood anyway. Did your mum put you up to this? Be honest. I, it, it was her idea, yes, to be completely Cause, honest. Because she is a scientist, a mad scientist. Well, I, I don't really appreciate you calling my, my mum mad. Well... She's got half a pint of my blood. Well, I mean, it's it's for what I can only assume is a good cause. The, it, the museum, if that's the only thing she's using it for, then I'm happy about that. I just wish I'd known, to be honest. I just wish I'd known. All right, well, I'll keep you in the loop next time. Next, next time? Yeah, okay. Right, next time. Okay. <laughs> um, you know, actually, Birch, your idea of the double human being... Yeah. Well, I mean, you're not actually the first person to come up with this, because don't forget that uh, Leonardo da Vinci, of course, invented uh, Vitruvian Man, which is that picture of a man in a circle, and he's got four arms and four legs. That's right, yeah. God, we're both both on the same way. Let me start that again. God, yeah, you're right. I must both be on the same wave, uh, same wavelength. <laughs> same wavelength. God, yeah, you're right. You know, me and Da Vinci, we most... Uh, I can't speak. <laughs> God, yeah, you're right. You know, me and Da Vinci, we uh, both seem to be on the same, wa- uh, same wavelength. <laughs> Is that the one we're going with? No, or I, I want to get attempt? it. I'm d- same wavelength, same wavelength, same wavelength, same wavelength, same wavelength. God, yeah, you're right. <laughs> God, me and Da Vinci, we... Uh, Seem to both be on the same wavelength. <laughs> well, that's easy for you to say. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yeah, I mean, he was a great man, and he invented lots of things. Maybe you are onto something. Maybe you are onto something. What about some of his other inventions, though? Because uh, he had a lot, didn't he? He had a lot. Not all of them got built. In fact, not many of them got built. No. But he did, uh, he did build a lot of things. Um, you know he invented, like, a machine gun? That's right, yeah, he did make a machine gun, the mad bastard. Gunpowder was really, like, it still wasn't the most completely prevalent mode of warfare at the time. Mm. But basically it was like a series of rifles that would um, kind of go off in sequence. You know, you could sort of set one off and then it'd all go one after the other, sort of like a primitive machine gun. I saw that he made this machine gun, and, and, and to be to be completely honest, Sean, now, now that I come to think of it, like when I was reading through some of his inventions... I mean, I, I just got the impression that this is a very angry man and a man who I think wanted to do harm to the world. There were a lot of weapons and machines of destruction in his list of inventions, weren't there? There were there was a tank, um, oh my God. although it didn't look anything like a tank that we would know. Um, there was like a robotic knight. I don't know if that was ever meant to be for warfare, but I mean, it's sort of like just just like a suit of armor that would move his arms about. Yeah, there was a, there was some sort of steam powered cannon as well, wasn't there? Just like the the, the ramblings of a, an absolute evil bastard, I, I would say. Yeah, I mean, again, coming from a person who wanted to uh, to clone me and you into one being. Yeah, but for good. For good, for podcasting, good. For, yeah, for the good of podcasting. Like, I mean, th- this guy isn't doing anything for podcasting. Uh, well, I tell you what. How about this for good in the world, though? I've come up with a new range of gelato flavours. You know, I've taken our life as gelato salesman. I've taken our inspiration from Da Vinci. I've combined them. Oh, wow, that does sound very nice. Although, I don't know if you could necessarily call a a new flavour of gelato an invention. Shut up and eat this. Try it. It's on a spoon. All right. If it's on a spoon, I'll have it. So, what do you think? Hmm. Calamari flavour. Oh! (laughs) <laughs> wait, 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 you don't like squid? I love, I love squid, all right? Just not in a fucking ice cream. Well, it's not ice cream, it's gelato. So. Or a gelato, I don't like it in either <laughs> of those things. I mean, you know, they're very big on seafood here in Italy. You know, it's a big part of the cuisine. You know, okay, try this one. All right, if it's on a spoon, I'll have it. Yeah. So that's a lovely, you know, that's a lovely pink colour. Mm. Yeah, so you, what are you expecting? Usually probably be getting like strawberry 
maybe even cherry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. crab. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, there's still a claw in it. Uh, yeah. I mean, the blender wasn't actually working, so I sort of mostly mashed it up with my fists. I may have missed the, the old claw or two. Yeah. Yeah, and the shell. Oh, I'll be picking that on my <laughs> teeth for days. Not just your teeth, my friend, and your throat. Maybe your stomach lining. You know, I, I, I hope those doctors, when they told me I was allergic to seafood, I hope they were, they were joking. I hope they were too. Um, all right, well, look, I've got this one last one. I'm sure you'll like this one. This is a flavour that, that I know you'll, you'll recognise. You'll know this one. You, Go on, have this one. You're sure? I'm, I'm going to double check before I put this in my mouth. You're sure I'm going to like this one? Uh, you'll definitely recognise it. Hmm. All right, fine, I'll try it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's familiar, isn't it? <laughs> it's oddly familiar. Yeah, what are... It, Go on, what is it? <laughs> Cat food. <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, I thought, what's a, what's a good cheap source of, like, fish flavouring? You know, because, you know, the calamari and the crab, you know, you have to go down to the docks early in the morning and you have to wait, you know, wait for the boats to come in and... Sometimes it's in the morning, sometimes it's in the evening, and it's, you have to get it nice and fresh. But the cat food, that's got that nice fishy flavour, and it, you can just get that in a tin from the supermarket. Sean, these are the worst flavours of ice cream, or gelato. I can see you were just about to correct me there. Thank the you. The worst flavours of gelato or ice cream that I've ever had in my entire life. Well, you're just an uncultured swine, aren't you? I'm sorry it's not a chalk ice. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. well, chalk ices taste nice, Sean. Take a leaf out of the chalk ice book. Well, look, Da Vinci was not always appreciated in his time. This will end up in our museum one day. I don't know. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell my mum, I'm going to tell my mum, if Sean, if Sean tries to get these ice creams into, into the museum, just d- deny, deny. Well, maybe just at least in the museum gift shop. We want people to come back. They'll be coming back. They'll be coming back for the calamari ice cream. Gelato. So an invention of his that you mentioned earlier, um, briefly, was the uh, the robot. The robot knight, yeah. The idea of it was basically to just sort of stand, sit, raise its visor up so you'd see that there was nothing in there. Like that. It was like operated by a series of, of pulleys and cables, just to, I guess as a kind of fancy thing to, uh, to entertain people. Oh, so it wasn't ever going to actually fight. Like, they weren't going to get it jousting or, or like, cleaving people with swords. It was, it was just for entertainment. Yeah, that's right. But, I mean, what what a lot of people don't realise, and this is sort of like a secret history of uh, Da Vinci, so he... Ah, um, he... Uh, this, is, this is where your Da Vinci Code training comes in, from having watched the film all those times. That's right, yeah. This is all entirely from the Da Vinci Code. So he showed this robot off. He was like, right, okay, come on, you're going to... You're gonna do this now. You're gonna you're gonna do your job. He shows it in front of all the people. It's just like, look, watch this. Watch him lift his arm up. Watch him turn his head slightly left, really awkwardly, and they're all stood there about to go, ooh, ah, and it didn't do a single thing. Is this true? It never happened. It didn't work. It didn't happen. And then they they said, Da Vinci, you fuck off. Get out of here and you take your stupid knight's armor with you. Bloody idiot! They're all going boom, fuck off, all this kind of stuff. So he was carrying the knight under his arm. He's like, (laughs) bloody hell, bloody hell. There he was, like under under a night sky on a hill, eating gelato. Full moon. He had like a little gelato and a cone in in the knight's hand as well. Ah. He was like, I I wish, I wish just just for one day that you'd do as I say. I'd wish for one day that you'd move. Suddenly, (laughs) right. Lightning bolt comes from the sky, hits the knight's armor. It only starts moving. Wow! Oh, this is incredible. I can't believe I never heard about this. Yep. No, nobody seems to have heard of this. It's it's incredible. <laughs> but sure enough, the first thing that the uh, the robot did was like lift its arm up and, and started l- licking at the gelato in its hand. Right. And Vinci was like, "Oh my god, you can move!" And then he went, "And not only that, I can speak," because he was Italian. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. I mean, that's funny that in your retelling, Da Vinci said it in your voice, but the robot spoke back to him in an Italian accent. That's strange, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe, just just for the sake of verisimilitude, maybe f- f- from now on, if you do both of them with um, stereotypical Italian accents, just so the audience listening doesn't get confused. Uh, we'll give Da Vinci, uh, he's an old man, so we'll give him a gruff old man voice. Is he, is he an old man in this story? Okay. I don't know, I just always... I mean, you... 
I just always picture him as an old man, a dirty old man. Yeah, because he he lived nearly 600 years ago, so you're thinking of him as an old man. <laughs> yeah, it was ages ago. He must be old. So the robot starts eating the gelato, and then Da Vinci's like, Oh, my God, you can uh, you can talk and you can eat the gelato. Oh, my God, mamma mia. And then <laughs> the robot is like, And then not only that, but I can speak too. He's like, Oh, my God, it must have been a thunderbolt that hit you in the head. Yes, uh, that is right, but you wished that I only live 24 hours. I have 24 hours to be a real boy. Oh, wow. Yeah, it was incredible. And so Da Vinci, you know, he only had 24 hours, so he took him took him on holiday to Rome. You know, it's a nice spot to go. Yeah, yeah, well, I can tell you that. I'm standing here. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So they, uh, they, they saw all the sights, although a lot of them weren't really that old at the time that they were seeing no. them. So it's just like, why are you taking me here? These are new builds, aren't they? And was there, was there any more dialogue between them in this telling? Yes, there was. Um, <laughs> so the robot, you know, he spends some time with Da Vinci. You know, they go to the sites, eat lots of uh, gelato, you know, and just have a, a lovely time. And then the robot's like, this is all well and good, but I want to be like a, a real man. And then... Da Vinci's like, what are you talking about? What do you mean, a real man? And then the robot goes, I want to have... Uh-oh. Uh-oh. This isn't this isn't me making... The, does this sound like I'm making this up on the spot? Because it's definitely uh, no, not no, okay. No. I'm, I'm relaying an ancient text. Okay, An sure. ancient text. No, I know. I know, but I just... I saw that glint in your eye. I just... I had a just... A, 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 feeling uh, like almost like precognition as to where this story was going to go but do carry on and, and please d- don't let me interrupt you again thank you thank you and <laughs> with my w- with my qualms and so the robot basically said i want to spend the night with the lady i knew it and i, I mean like he's he's only he's you gotta remember sean this this robot had 24 hours to live to experience yeah. the things that humans just take for granted so he he wanted he just wanted to feel something. Beautiful, really. Beautiful. Absolutely. And so Da Vinci, you know, he uh, he went out with uh, the robot. They went went to an Italian disco, you know, picked up two women. One for each or both for the robot? <laughs> he's not greedy, Sean. He just, he just, wants, <laughs> he just wants to feel love. Um, well, no, Da Vinci was there. He was, he was like, chatting with... Um, some bird, he was like, hey, you want to see my drawings? And she was like, yawn, boring. Like, he wouldn't This stop. guy's a robot. Yeah. Well, she, she thought that um, Da Vinci was the robot with uh, showing up, just like talking about his, his his own interests, not really asking her any questions. Like, oh, I painted this picture of this uh, this lady. She's doing a, a kind of a smile and smirk looking off at it. And she's like, oh, yeah, yeah, painting other women. Yeah, that's great. And meanwhile, it seems to be going so well for the robot night. They called him Robbie. Right, Robbie. Ro- oh, okay, yeah, yeah. It's good to know that he at least named him. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Robbie. And it's like... It's not, it's not a very Italian name, though. R- Roberto. Oh, Roberto, yeah. I've got a sh- Robbie short for Roberto, yeah. yeah. I'll call him Roberto yeah. from now on. And so, yeah, it, it's going a hell of a well. They're, like, really hitting it off. They're, like, two peas in a pod. And so then Roberto says to... um. Da Vinci, oh, this is the best night of my life. Thank you so much, Father, for bringing me to life with the thunder. <laughs> and, um, and then Da Vinci's like, oh, that's quite all right. Uh, you don't have uh, very long to go. And so they all left uh, They all left the club. They're walking along the cobble steps, and then one of the women goes, hey, watch this. She does like a, a cartwheel, cartwheel along the cobble steps. Oh, yeah, and, she and must have been feeling very exuberant. Exactly, yeah. And then the other one, the other woman goes, watch this. She does a cartwheel as well. And then they say, oh, go on, Da Vinci. And he's like, oh, fucking forget that I'm an old man. <laughs> I fucking put my hip out. And they're, they're like, oh, you fuck, you square, fuck off, why don't you? And he's like, why is everybody always telling me to fuck off? I'm a, <laughs> I'm a nice old man. Why do people treat me this way? <laughs> And then, and then they, and then they're like, yeah, yeah, fuck off, mate. Yeah, Roberto, Roberto's cool, unlike you. And then Da Vinci's like, don't you do it, Roberto? Don't you give in to the peer pressure? And then Roberto's like, ha, they're right. You are stupid, old man. Betrayed him. 
just because of wow. a bit of peer pressure because because them two lovely ladies were were, were saying that it, it's heartbreaking it is and, and honestly this story has everything that's all i just want to say well there's a bit of a, a moral coming up i'm sure so da vinci's like don't you do the cartwheeler roberto and then roberto goes you're not the boss of me i watch this now remember he is a knight's armor suit right I just, I never forgot that, this whole story, that he was a robot made of nice armor. In fact, I think that's kind of the point of the story. If you've forgotten that, the story means a lot less. <laughs> There'll be people listening to this going, oh, yeah. <laughs> For a second, he seemed so human in the end. I just completely <laughs> forgot. He really came alive in the telling of the story, yeah. Yeah. So there he goes. He does a cartwheel, right? His head comes off. Fuck. One of the women screams. She goes, Mamma mia! Like that, right? He slips. The whole suit breaks apart. Wow. They're scared. They're like, what the hell just happened? What the hell just happened? D- da Vinci's there like, he's like, oh, you didn't see anything. Get out of here. They run away. <laughs> he's he's there. He's trying to hobble together like the pieces of his, of his son, really, that he gave life to. Yeah. Roberto's like, I'm a sorry father. I'm a sorry I betray you. And then... Da Vinci's like, it's okay, I forgive you, my son. And they both look up and see the moon there in the sky. And then Roberto says to Da Vinci, You showed me a good day, a human the day. I will never forget this father. And then and then he just turned to dust. Turned to what? dust. <laughs> dust. <laughs> Why would he turn to dust? Surely he should have just turned back to an inanimate robot. No. Knight of Art, a suit of armour. No, that is not what happened. <laughs> Turned to dust. Oh, wow. What a twist, I guess. <laughs> I guess, yeah. <laughs> and, I mean, I mean, there's so much to, to un- unpack there, really. Um, well, there is, there is, there what is. It, what it means to be human, you know, for one, that we should, you know, really stay truthful and faithful to, to the people that really care about us, you know. that's. I, I think that's what that... Uh, that journal, that real journal document that Da Vinci wrote was, was trying to get at. Now, shifting a little bit from that very truthful tale you just told, let's go back mm. to inventiveness and inventions. Uh, I have, in fact, invented something else to help us out at our gelato kiosk. Oh, nice. Is it, oh, it, it's not more seafood-based gelato, is it? No, no, it's not. It's no, none of that. I mean, I've got lots of that left over, though, if you're no, getting I'm, peckish. I'm no. quite full, to be completely honest. I'm all right. No, no. Well, look, part of the, the process of making gelato, freezing, of course, you know? Yes. Uh, but freezing can take quite a long time. I have invented a flash freezer. Wow. So... If you, I don't know if you just want to come over here and examine it. I've just got it here around the back. Yeah, sure. Yeah, no, let's, uh, let's have a look. I mean, I've still got a few sort of safety bugs to work out. Because, for example, here. So, look, if you just put your hand in there, in the sort of freezer compartment area. Yeah, right. Do that with your left hand. And with your right hand, right, press this big red button on the side. Big red button. Uh, yep, yeah, got it, got it. Okay. Yeah. Now, is your left hand starting to feel cold at all? Because it's just been flash frozen. Um, oh, it is a yeah, it is a bit chilly now that you uh, now that you mention it. Cool, that was that was so instant. I <laughs> didn't even notice the change. Well, yeah, yeah, because it sort of like killed and deadened all of the feeling in your hand, so you weren't have felt it because it was so quick. But like I say, that's one of the safety bugs that I need to figure out because really, you shouldn't be able to turn it on while the compartment doors open for you to be able to put your hand in. That's the issue. So thank you for demonstrating that. What? Hang on a minute. What have you done to? My- Oh my god, it's, it's dead and blue! Uh, yeah, it's frozen, like I said. I it's, thank you for demonstrating the issue. Why, why couldn't you have put something else in there? Like, I don't know, a gelato? Well, again, I was not demonstrating its effectiveness, I was demonstrating its flaw, its safety flaw. Look, I think it's been a great success. Go on, high five. Alright, fine, ha- high five. <laughs> oh no! Uh, oh, uh. You've just shattered my left hand! And you, you are actually left-handed, aren't you? I forgot that. I am, yeah. I should, I should have told you to put your right hand in. Sorry. You should have used something other than my fucking hands. <sighs> yeah, you're right. You're right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, and I probably shouldn't have gone in for the high five. I mean, you just, you know, it's like a knee-jerk reaction. You just 
Oh well, yeah, if, so, well. if somebody says high five, what are you going to do? Say no. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. Um, you don't, you've always had a hand there, haven't you? So I imagine this is quite strange not having one. Yeah, funnily enough, I have always had a hand there on, on my arm. That's right. It's always been there, except for now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, sorry. Um, look, do you want some sort of commiseration gelato? Like I say, I've got loads. I'm fine, thanks. Okay, well, I'm glad to hear you're fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, how about this? Okay, I do actually have a prototype, something I've been working on. Now, I wasn't actually ready to reveal this. This wasn't as ready as the flash freezer was. I've also been working on a bit of a robot. I've, I've, I've only got as far as making the hand. Right, okay. Now, without going too conspiratorial here, if that is indeed a word, the fact that you destroyed my hand and now you seem to you just happen to have one uh you know lying about just seems a bit odd to me sean well you may think so uh but this is a right hand and we just destroyed your left hand so ha what do you mean ha well well it means you're gonna have two right hands i don't know well all right I'll, i'll wear it for now until we get something sorted out they might be able to put the pieces of my hand together at the hospital we should probably scoop them up and put them back in the flash freezer. Keep them nice and cool. No, don't put them in the flash freezer. Just put them, keep them with the other gelatos. All right, that, that, I'm sure that will be fine enough. <laughs> yeah, okay. Just, just I'll make just sure put... you don't sell my hand as fucking gelato topping. Actually, it's a good thing you said that. I was just going to put it on top of chocolate, which is one of the most popular flavors. Just find an empty space for it, please. Okay. Look, um, this this hand, you know, I I, I really did follow Da Vinci's work with this so um it is of course made of of wood and linen and it's held together with cat food ice cream um so it's i'm not saying it's like a a, an ideal situation for you (laughs) no no no, i wouldn't say that either (laughs) we'll just do a temporary graft until we can get your your real hand put back together and grafted on all right fine look yeah here's, here's my arm just put this hand on yeah okay I just, I've kind of got to pinch your nub a bit. (laughs) (laughs) All right, yeah, they have slid it on there. Great. How's it? How's it working? Handmade of wood linen and cat food ice cream. Great. Just what I've always wanted. (laughs) I think we've done all right. High five, mate. Yeah. No, no, no. I'm not doing that again. You'll knock it off. See, you're learning. You're learning. This is weird. Two right hands. Now you got me thinking about some possibilities there. What? What? Well, hang on, no, but you're left-handed, so that's like having two really crap hands for you. Like, I can't even clap. Can't you? What do you mean you can't even clap? Look, they're facing the other way. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, sorry about that, yeah. Yeah, I see, I see your issue, yeah. Um, I, I, I probably could have... I don't know what you can do, to be honest. You're kind of a bit, bit useless now. I mean, I'm going to have to do most of the gelato scooping. Can you even use the till, or...? Probably not. What are we going to do with you, eh? Get me to a hospital, maybe. Ah, oh, later, later. We've we still got work to do. We, you know, we we've got we're here for another four hours till our shift ends. Yeah, yeah, I guess. You know, it does it does make me think about how some of Da Vinci's inventions were not always successes. Obviously, we heard about the wonderful success of the robot knight, Roberto. Yeah. But there were some some of his that never came into fruition, and some of them that were just outright failures. Have you ever seen the designs he did for this? Uh, you could call it a kind of helicopter. You could also call it an aerial screw. It's sort of like a, a chamber for somebody to sit in, and it's just got this big screw on top, which supposedly is going to just whirl around and lift somebody into the air. I mean, it doesn't really look very flyable, does it? No, not really. And like from the some of the research that I I was doing, some people believe that it might have just been kind of built for, for theatrical spectacle rather than to actually fly. Because like you say, to look at it, just like the, the kind of size of it and the actual, I guess, what would have in, been intended to be the propellers, like you say, it was going around like in a, a circular motion, like a spinning sail. Like, I can't see this thing getting off the ground at all. No, no. And he also had a go at a, at a catapult and a parachute, a few other things. But the catapult one's interesting. You know, the catapult had been around for hundreds of years at that point, but he basically was trying to optimise it. Again, going back to the war machines that we were talking about earlier. Mm. He was trying to optimise it and try and make it more accurate, you know, over longer distances. Now, I've actually, uh, I've had another go. Now, I thought some of my own inventions so far, 
I've had mixed success, you know, with the ice cream flavors, with the flash freezer, the robot hand. I, I thought, how about I, tr- I try one of Da Vinci's ones, right? So I've had a go at the catapult. Okay. I've made a miniature version, right? And I've done a lot of grafting today, as well as grafting you a, a hand. I've also grafted this catapult onto the top of the ice cream van that we usually go around and do our rounds with in the afternoon. Not ice cream van, sorry, gelato van. Hmm, that's better. Yeah, so, um, well, usually you do the driving, um, but I don't know if you're going to manage that today. No. So, basically, the idea is, maybe I'll get you on top, right? I'll drive the van. We've got you on top with a catapult. This, this is basically to try and get, give people free samples of, of the new gelato flavours, right? Because I really want to get some, some buzz. This is sort of like um, street team level viral marketing, right? right. So I'm thinking we, we, we get you on top, right? You're feeding the new ice cream flavours, little scoops of them into this miniature catapult that I've grafted on top, right? And we could just fling it into people's mouths or, or hands if they're quick enough to catch them. Mm. We'll start with the cat food flavour. Oh, yeah. If we run out of that, we'll move on to the crab and calamari. Basically, we can just sort of like launch it at people and uh, and the free ice cream. You know, sounds great, doesn't it? I mean, everyone loves ice cream. Gelato, I'm not so sure about, but you know, it's worth a shot. Literally. Right. Okay, mate. So climb on top of the ice cream van. You'll see the catapults up there, and uh, we'll get going. Quick, barricade the door. Right. I think I think we're safe now. We've made it to the Da Vinci Museum. We've barricaded the doors. I can't believe that they attacked us like that. That escalated so quickly. I mean, who doesn't want gelato? I know, and free and delivered in a convenient and fast and safe, well, maybe not. Okay, it wasn't a very safe way to throw gelato at people, as, as it turns out. And and yeah, some people got window smashed and, and blinded by gelato, but I, I just didn't think that they'd form a, a mob like that. No, well, I, I think it was when that flock of seagulls came in and, and just kind of swarmed the place because of the seafood-flavoured gelato. I mean, they caused as much ruckus as, as the angry mob. Oh, the whole piazza was after us. This is Rome, though, isn't it? I mean, I felt like we were in the Colosseum. I thought, uh, you know, it was like the crowd wanting our blood. Yeah, when in Rome. <laughs> when in Rome, yeah, exactly. Well, we're holed up in here in the museum. I don't know what we're going to do. Well, I, I don't think that they saw us come into the Da Vinci Museum, so I, I think we're okay in here. In terms of escaping, I'm not really sure what we're going to do. Yeah, I mean, just peering out the window, I, I can see that they're tearing apart this gelato stand we've been working in for the last couple of weeks. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, my hand's still in there. Don't look. Let's, if, we, if, if we can get you out of here alive, we'll be lucky. Forget your hand. I can't forget my hand. It was literally a part of me. Well, we'll get you. We'll get you a new one when we get. I'll invent you a new hand when we get back to the UK. All right. Oh great! What's this one going to have? Two fingers and a fucking tail, probably. <laughs> you give me some ideas, yeah. But let's focus on getting out of here alive, okay? All right, fine. Maybe, maybe, maybe one of his inventions can can help us. Right. So, right. Let's look around. Is there anything you can see that might help? Oh, we've got his uh, his catapult. Well. That's just got us in trouble, yeah. I mean, I'll say, though, it was very good. Not as accurate as I'd hoped. You know, you you hit a lot of people in the face. No. I mean, you should have been aiming for the mouth, not the eyes. I guess. Yeah, I'm just imagining us splatting against a wall like the gelato was. Oh, you were going to fling us out of the catapult, yeah. Uh, What did you think I was suggesting? Well, I don't like fighting them off or something. You've got violence on the brain. You need to calm down. Right, okay. Well, I'm riled up, okay. Well, what else have we got here that we could possibly use? There's an empty knight's outfit. Don't suppose there's a thunderstorm brewing that we could bring him to life? Or we could climb inside the suit. I oh, know there's only one suit. There's only one suit of armor, isn't there? No. Mm. Oh, God. Well, maybe you know, if 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 only one of us can get out, maybe we'll uh, draw straws and and see who gets out in the armor. Yeah, maybe. I guess. Oh, God, there must be a better idea around here. Hang on. What's that? Over there in the corner, that that looks like a recreation of that aerial screw, that proto-helicopter. What, you mean the thing that can't fly? How are we going to escape in that? Yeah, look, I know we were taking the piss out of it earlier. It doesn't look like it can fly, but let's, let's, let's just give it a go, yeah? I'd, I'd, I'd feel stupid even sitting in the thing. Look, come on, just get in. All right, fine. How, how are you even meant to work this thing? Where's, where's the button or the... the, the guiding system or whatever i assumed it would be steam powered but look pedals it's pedal powered 
That's even worse. I'm tired. We've just been running for about half a mile. Look, just give it a go, right? Give it a little pedal. All right. Okay. Look, the screw's turning. The screw's turning. Yeah, so it, yeah. it, it works. Yeah. Yeah, I'm pedaling. All right. Pedaling. Okay. Well, look, look. Mate, we're, we're starting to lift off the ground. No, don't be silly. Look, 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 look down. Oh, my God, we're about half a foot off the ground. What? Keep pedaling, mate. Keep pedaling. Carl, you pedal as well. Look, there's another one there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Jesus. It's working. We're about 10 feet off the ground. God, he made something that wasn't complete junk. Right. We can use this to escape. This is perfect. We just need to smash through this glass ceiling and we'll be fine. Yep. Sounds good to me. Let's go really hard now to get through this glass ceiling. <sighs> okay. Three, two, one, go. Oh my god, we made it through! We did it! Look, there's the piazza down below. All the people are waving and shouting at us. <laughs> Look at those idiots. <laughs> <laughs> Look, you're only making them madder now, but I suppose it doesn't matter. We're escaping. Yeah, uh, take that, you bastards. <laughs> you're really not doing a lot of good for our national identity here, mate. Oh, I don't care. I'm never coming back to this, this evil city again where they, they serve false ice cream. You heard me, didn't you? False ice cream, that's what you eat. Oh, look, we're, 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 look, I'm so glad we're getting out of here. I don't even care about your racial hatred. It's not racial, it's ice cream based. Ice cream based hatred. Uh, fair enough, fair enough. Oh, well, you know, now that we're actually up in the air, I feel like we can take it a bit easier with the pedaling. I mean, the wind's kind of carrying us. This is quite nice up here. I've been on metal planes that have felt rockier than this. This is, this is a smooth ride. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if we just sort of head north from Rome, we'll, we'll make it over the Alps, hopefully. We'll see where we end up. Yep, yeah, that sounds good to me. Nice nice view of the Alps, just taking the scenery as we go. I'm sure it'll be lovely. I'm sure it will. Yeah, well, um, why don't we wrap up the episode since we're uh, having such a nice time up here. We can take in the views a bit more if we finish recording. That sounds good to me. Well, listeners, thank you very much for listening. If you enjoyed the podcast, maybe you want to contact us. You can do that in a number of different ways, one of which being email, mailboxrogesgallery at gmail.com. And you can also get us on social media. On Twitter, we're at Mailbox Rogues, and you can also find us on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok, where we are under the handle Mailbox Rogues Gallery. And you can, of course, listen to us on a variety of different platforms, your Stitchers, your Spotify's, your YouTubes, your Apple Podcasts, and on any of those, but especially Apple Podcasts, do please leave us a nice rating and review if you've enjoyed some of our little adventure we've had this week. Absolutely. And, you know, there's a number of different places where you can contact us, not only the social media links that I mentioned earlier, but also our Discord as well. All right, well, that's the plugs done. Now, how do we pilot this thing? Um, I don't know. It's, it's sort of only really got an up and down function, hasn't it? But anyway, tell you what, actually, if we uh, kind of head north, you know, sort of Alpswood, and then uh, take a little left, we could find ourselves in France. Oh, that would be nice. Yeah, yeah. Oh, why don't we aim for Paris? I mean, there's no telling where we'll actually land, but we can sort of tilt that direction. If we make it to Paris, why don't we have a chat about, uh, I don't know, Marie Curie? She'd be an interesting person to talk about, if we make it to Paris. She would be a very interesting person to talk about. I say we make it a date. All right. Okay, well, listeners, we'll see you there. Until next time, listeners, arrivederci. Arrivederci, bellissimo, moi. Ta-da-da-da-da!